Hello and welcome to this week's Canadian Independent Media. This week we have media manipulation, we have democracy in voting, and more microwaves are coming your way. For the first story, here's Jack Etkin. So, a question. Are Canada's media and government focusing anger towards Muslims to create divisions in Canada? It's important to remember that corporate Canada owns virtually all our big media. Almost every TV station, radio station, and newspaper in our country, all controlled by the 1% of the 1%. And these people know that in order to rule, they have to keep the rest of us divided. And they have to keep us looking over there while they steal and destroy everything right in front of us. This concept is thousands of years old. The super-rich don't want us thinking about the fact that the 86 wealthiest Canadian families have as much wealth as the 11.4 million people at the bottom of our economic ladder. They also don't want us talking about the free, tr free trade deals they love so much. Or this. So instead, they create another enemy to divide us and keep us occupied. And right now, the enemy they are trying to create for us is the entire Muslim world. The vast majority of people who are Muslims are good people, just like the vast majority of everybody else. And we should all be working together in peace and friendship on our common problems. And we could be doing this, except our leaders don't want that. They want, it seems, never-ending war and never-ending trouble. They want us fighting each other, so they can maintain their wealth and their power. This is the division and hate our leaders are deliberately creating. Sixteen years ago, our rulers gave us 9-11, and the official 9-11 story is a pack of lies according to thousands of architects and engineers who say it is impossible. So we have a couple of thousand architects and engineers who say the official 9-11 story is impossible, but that's not an issue. There is no investigation of their concerns, and the media ignores the whole thing as if it was of no importance. And from 9-11 came a corporate war of terror that has destroyed Afghanistan and Iraq and Libya and Syria and other countries as well. Well, the question isn't who or why anymore, so much as how. How could 200,000 tons of steel drop to the ground in under 11 seconds? And Canada played a major role in this terror, and our wonderful media supported it 100%. And out of all this war came ISIS and the creation of millions of refugees. So a week ago in Edmonton, we have this. And our media tells us, the evidence suggests the suspect was an ISIS supporter. An ISIS flag was found, we are told. And we know there are ISIS supporters right here in Canada, we are told. The media is again linking fear and terror to people who are Muslim. But our media doesn't tell us that just as the 9-11 story is full of holes, so the ISIS story is full of holes, because many experts believe the people who run the United States are also the people who are running ISIS. And here's a tweet from the, from the leader of the Green Party in the United States while she was running for the presidency that says it pretty clearly. But the corporate media and the corporate politicians refuse to allow any talk about any of this. We are only allowed to know the official story, which is their official story. There are very crazy things going on these days. Powerful forces are trying to divide us in order to maintain their wealth and control. In these difficult times, we all have to do our best to stick together and focus on our real enemies and our real problems. And we need more democracy so that we Canadians have some power in our hands to build the kind of future we want, whatever that may be. Right now, the corporations and their politicians have all the power, and that is clearly not working for us. So, it may be time for a big change. Hmm. 
As we get older, for most of us, our memory doesn't serve us as well as it used to. Be it faces, names, or places, it seems it gets harder to make the connections. Being among that distinctive group, I began to look around to see if simply aging is the cause. However, everyone knows someone beyond 80 years of age whose mind is still sharp as a tack, they say, so maybe I should look elsewhere. First, it is no secret that our bodies are full of new chemicals that were unknown 50 years ago and more are being spread into the environment in increasing rates. And then there is the unknown effects of a diet full of genetically modified organisms, again a recent addition. And if that's not enough, how about the effects of being bombarded with microwave radiation from your cell phone or cell phone towers, ubiquitous Wi-Fi everywhere you go? including your own home if you need wireless connections to the internet. And finally, the proliferation of smart meters and smart appliances. All of these warrant considerations, but there is a new kid on the block, literally. Placed on top of light and electric poles are little metal boxes transmitting the fastest, shortest, highest intensity wavelengths within the microwave spectrum. Its name, 5G. Approved by the regulatory agencies without even being tested, 5G is touted as the coming of age for the Internet of Things. Driverless cars, faster internet, home appliances, and yes, those smart meters we know and love all use this frequency. Because the higher frequencies have shorter ranges, the power has to be increased and the distance shortened. No need for cell towers now, as there will effectively be one just outside your door. Without any fanfare or indeed any notice, TELUS has been installing these transmitters locally while they install fiber optic cables. Brentwood Bay on Vancouver Island and parts of Vancouver are the first areas covered. You can see them at the top of poles like this. Scientists have been warning about the effects of electromagnetic radiation, or EMF, for over 50 years. Former U.S. government physicist Dr. Ron Powell points out <clears throat> that 5G would irradiate everyone, including the most vulnerable, to harm from EMF. Pregnant women, unborn children, your children, the elderly, the disabled, and the chronically ill. Even bees are being affected by this radiation. It has been shown that irradiated migratory birds displayed increased levels of aggression. Extremely low EMF levels, such as, such as those emitted by cell phones, cause heart attacks and death in some chicken embryos. The research is ongoing and troubling. Meanwhile, leaders around the world are taking the harmful effects more seriously. Countries like Switzerland, Italy, France, Austria, Luxembourg, Bulgaria, Poland, Hungary, Israel, Russia, and China have exposure limits 100 to 10,000 times lower than in the USA and Canada. A review of Canada's Safety Code 6 by Dr. Meg Sears identified 140 studies showing an adverse biological effect in the literature, but missing from the Canadian review. Despite Health Canada's position that EMF radiation within its prescribed limits is safe, they fail to note that EMF sensitivity is cumulative. In other words, the older we get, the worse it gets for those that are affected. At least that will be my excuse when I forget someone's name next time. So some good news, the citizens of BC are going to vote in 2018 on changing our voting system. About one year from now, the people of British Columbia are going to vote about maybe changing our voting system. We will choose whether to keep our present system or move to a proportional voting system. Personally, I think this is very important because I think proportional voting is more democratic than what we have now. Also, PR voting systems are more difficult for the people at the top to control. I think the number one reason why the power structure is working so hard to keep our old voting system unchanged forever is because it works for them. They love it, and they do not intend to let us change it. 
Proportional voting will create big changes in our elections, in our politics, in our governments, and in our country. And I think these changes will be for the better. One of the reasons Northern Europe leads the world in many positive things is that they do have proportional voting. This gives citizens more power, and the people of Europe have used this power to make their countries better. In Canada, we have a voting system that gives corporate Canada more control over our governments. That is one big reason why our health care system is so bad, why the homeless roam our streets, and why we have GMO foods, while the Europeans mostly don't. In other words, voting systems are important for democracy. In about one year, we BCers will be getting a referendum ballot in the mail. And we will use that ballot to vote for or against a new voting system. I think we can expect a very negative reaction from the media. Here's one example from the Vancouver Sun. And this article was pretty negative. And here's Victoria's Daily Paper. And this article is just about completely negative. We've been talking about changing our voting system for years now. And the media has done a pretty good job of making sure that most of us have absolutely no idea about how any of the systems work. Our lack of information makes it easier for them to manipulate us. And I think that's exactly what they intend to do. The power structure does not want us to have proportional voting because it is more democratic. And we are going to have to work very hard and be very smart if we want to get it. Otherwise, we'll keep getting more of this. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching Canadian Independent Media. Thank you.